Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us tonight for the Hampton Municipal Budget Committee regular meeting of Tuesday, September 15th, 2015. And if everybody would rise and pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. And for the sake of opening up this meeting at 7 o'clock here, uh, I just want to again reiterate on, on camera for everybody that we do have a new secretary. The secretary will not be in the room with us. She will take it from the broadcast. And for that reason, if you would speak audibly not cover up your microphones and identify yourself especially when we do a vote um, any votes that we take this evening the yes votes will be taken as a number total and the no votes uh, will be taken in a roll call so be clear talk clearly and <clears throat> because we are such a large group if only one person would speak at a time and um, if necessary there may be times when I need you to identify yourself Sometimes the camera is not as broad as we are for 15 and, and tonight 17 people. Um, this evening I would like to start out um, with everybody introducing themselves. And Nick, I'm going to have you start on your end. Sure, Nick Bridal. Scott Blair. Mike Pierce. Sonny Kravitz. Representative Dave Wood. Jim O'Loughlin. Brian Lapham. Eileen Latimer, Chairman. Stephen LeBranche. Jones. Mike Bluff. Bob Ladd, Precinct Representative. Jerry's an Illinois School Board Representative, SAU 90. Glenn Farrell. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. And this evening joining us is SAU Superintendent Kathleen Murphy and SAU Finance Director Nathan Lunny. We're always happy to see the two of you. <laughs> welcome back Thanks. for uh, our 19th, Thanks. what is it, tw 19th, see, I'm going back a decade, 2015 wrap-up. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's why we're here. We're thrilled to be here. Um, we're, we're always glad to present and provide you with the data that you need to help you understand what we've accomplished, but where we're headed to. So that's what we want to do tonight. Um, Nathan and I tried to um, make sure that our, um, our presentation tonight was um, very efficient. So we'll, go, we'll get through the, 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 the few slides that we did and then open it up for questions. But um, our goal is to try to get through this as quickly as possible, um, but really respectful of the questions that you may have. Uh, for us, um, and sometimes that's just as important. So I'm going to um, I'm going to kick off uh, the meeting. We did put some things in front of you uh, that we'll explain along the way. The slides and all of the uh, reporting materials tonight are in the document that looks like that, folks. That was at your table. Yeah. Thank you. So the first slide is just kind of what we're going to do tonight. So we're not even going to spend any time on that. So you can see what our goals are tonight to, to, in terms of what we want to review. I'd like to go to the second uh, slide, which is just a quick update on some of the accomplishments um, that have uh, occurred over the year at, at SAU 90. We're very much engaged in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. We have a program at the middle school that has um, developed into a school-wide program, and all youngsters are exposed to the, the, the uh, curriculum that is focused on uh, STEM um, areas, content areas. But in addition to that, we know that you can't just start something in the middle and expect that it's going to take off and have some power along the way. So our first and second and third grade teachers are working on science curriculum, um, STEM related, very project based, hands on where youngsters have a chance to to, to uh, explore and to um, use resources. They're, they use their computers uh, so that they are understanding uh, concepts in the science, technology, engineering, and math. And that is repeated in grades three through five at Marston. So we're pretty proud of that. Um, this past year, we finalized curriculum in language arts and mathematics, and we've adopted some new assessments. Those assessments are tools that we use. They're critical tools to us in our business to assess the effectiveness of the instruction. You know, we used to grow up, right, with, the t with, with assessments and tests that measured us. 
us. Well, that's important. Don't get me wrong. We, we still want to know how the children are doing and how they're progressing. But in other ways, we have to assess how our teaching is. How effective <laughs> is it? Are the kids understanding the concepts, the standards that we, we teach every day? So we have some new assessments this year we're pretty excited about. Um, we also finished our first year of Power School. That was a new student information system. I think you remember that in the budget. We did it over two years. And so it's a very powerful tool that um, we can do all the student information that's required by the state, uh, teacher information, uh, along with uh, a parent portal. We have that open now at Hampton Academy where parents can go in, look at their students' work, see where they are, um, follow their grades. And we anticipate that next year we'll be uh, working on that with our elementary schools and giving them a chance parents for to, to go in and and see the progress of students uh, and then this year um, and again with the help of the school board we now have a, a program of computers uh, using Chromebooks of one-to-one -one in grades three through seven. So every youngster in grades three through seven now have a Chromebook that they use both uh, at school and at home. Uh, the eighth graders are using laptops. Their uh, Chromebooks they will get next year. In the primary school, you say, well, what happens to the little ones? Because if you have any grandkids or you have children of your own, you know they're very attentive to technology and they're pretty sharp on it, quite frankly. And uh, and so they have a, a computer ratio of about one and a half to for every one and a half kids in one computer. So uh, we're working on it. Um, that will happen over time. But we've repurposed the computers. When when the when the computers when the kids at Marston got a Chromebook, the computers that were in the Marston classroom were were moved down to the uh, to the primary grades. So that we were trying to make sure that we got. Uh, full use of those <clears throat> those pieces. Nathan's going to talk about two other yeah, quick things. Food service, we'll tell you more about it in just a little bit, but we turned a $17,500 loss in 13-14 into an $18,500 gain in 14-15. It's a target that we've talked about since SEU 90 started, and the board has been really attentive to it, and we've invested a lot of time and energy in it. And uh, despite the fact that there's some, some big changes in the foods that are prepared and the nutritional standards, which have made it tough to, to make kids like pizza and pasta <laughs> in the next generation, uh, the program really did well this year in that regard. Uh, and in the area of energy, uh, we talked in the budget development cycle last time about big increases related to our electric and our gas. We managed to find the market uh, much, much, much more forgiving than we had anticipated. So we'll be able to give some of that back in the next budget cycle because we we really locked our, our energy down in both regard, electricity and gas, pretty close to what we had been at and didn't see the spikes that they were promising we were going to see. So that's been, those have been a big, big part of this year as well. Our, again, our, our schools and our teachers stepped up and uh, for their work were recognized. As you know, last year we were here right before we found out about Center School being a nationally um, recognized Blue Ribbon School of Excellence. Uh, that means that um, their index scores were above the 90th percentile. Their, their work continues at the, at the primary school to be outstanding and they have made significant changes. But um, they have spent the year being nationally recognized and they've hung the flag. I understand the flag has to come down because there'll be a new round of Blue Ribbon School winners, but I know that Mr. Lannon will keep that flag flying in, inside. Uh, we also had this year a finalist for Teacher of the Year, uh, Al Magnuson, our eighth grade science teacher. Um, Al, Al, as many of you know, Al, he's just a, just a great teacher. The kids love him. He has wonderful rapport uh, and respect from the students and obviously very knowledgeable in the content area of science. Uh, two schools just recently named, uh, Marston and Center, both Blue Ribbon schools uh, for their volunteer programs. Those are hours. They must achieve numbers of hours where parents, families, guardians, uh, grandparents come in and support our schools. Uh, and volunteer so that you know that really helps us because it means that there's more adults working with our kids in in terms of their schoolwork and the last is we were recognized by the parent information center in the New Hampshire Department of Ed that was in special education um, and that was for the programs uh, and the support that we're providing in the area of special education <laughs> thank, you. Well, I thank, thank you for that from all of us thank you that is quite an accomplishment so to do all that and have money left over, <laughs> I, uh, the, the, uh, the 
the, the point of coming to the budget committee obviously is to talk to you about the financial summary and so I can report for 1415 the, the operating budget uh, finished with a surplus of three hundred and thirty two thousand dollars of unspent dollars that will go back to, re to relieve taxpayers on the revenue side we had excess unanticipated revenues of just under one hundred and fourteen thousand so the fund balanced offset taxes this fall as we set tax rates uh, just over four hundred and forty uh, four hundred forty six thousand dollars last year that figure was two hundred and nineteen thousand or two hundred ninety two hundred nineteen thousand two seventy uh, it, let's take a second. If you turn to page six in that packet, which probably comes out a, 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 a version of blue, you can look at the, <clears throat> the budget report. It's a summary by function. I've given you the adopted budget for 1415, the actual expended, and the balance remaining, or the variance. And then something I've been working on with the school board over the last couple of cycles is trying to provide some notes. The notes crept in because I was trying to make notes for myself that would remind me on a monthly basis when I sat in front of the board and the cameras what the explanation was. And they were kind of cryptic, but after I explained it a couple of times, it dawned on me that if I explained it to the board, it might be something they'd remember as well and, and be a useful tool. So the notes are on the right-hand side. I can, I can uh, come back to that if you want under questions. I can leave it with you because it's new to you tonight. You can dial back to me directly if you had other questions or uh, or I can provide answers in writing, but uh, sal is salary and SAV is save, and that may be enough to get you through. Uh, and our our board rep obviously um, can answer your questions because he's seen a lot of those crazy acronyms. But you can you can see that it, there are some positive variances in regular and special ed, which was really driven by savings and hiring. So we had uh, some staff retire and some staff move on, and we've replaced them at, at less expense, although continuing to, to find uh, great quality folks. Uh, you see some variances related to retirements, because we did have uh, uh, five retirements in 1415, and there are some, some stipends that are related to retirement that drove some of those lines over. The board made a decision uh, in June to help us move forward extra steps with our one-to-one -one initiative the superintendent just mentioned in the area of Chromebooks uh, and also and also uh, uh, asked us to provide some additional funding to our teachers, our classroom teachers, uh, to buoy their resources in the area of literacy. Uh, the other thing that you won't see in lots of lines but the board dealt with is that in our calendar and without spending too much time on it, we confronted a 27th payroll in what's normally a 26 pay cycle. Between 1415 and 1516, there's an extra payroll because of the way the calendar falls, and we ended up with an extra Thursday payday, which doesn't matter salary people, but for the classified staff, your secretaries, your custodians, and the, and the like, we, we took the hit of that unbudgeted 27th pay in 1415 rather than adding it to the budget for 1516. So we, we dealt with that there. I don't know if you've ever confronted that, but it was a reality that we talked about with the board in the development of the budget. And then we did have some overages in natural gas, but we've taken a swing at those I just mentioned. Uh, and we had some uh, grounds issues that we were, we were pleased to be able to take care of over the course of the spring and the summer. Uh, that's the budget report that drives us to a $332,000 fund balance. Mm -hmm. And the next page, page 7, is the revenue side, which I thought would be important. I've shared this with you before. <clears throat> The, the revenues, the revenues, remember, are projected at this time of year against the current budget. So the tax bill is roughly based on that which the voters said we could spend when they voted in March, minus the known revenues that we can collect from something other than taxes, and the balance ends up being the assessment. And so I give you the 27, which is January, when we put the budget on the townhouse wall, what is it that we think the revenues might look like for that year? In the fall, September, we have to commit to an estimate. That's the middle column of numbers, and the actual is the right-hand column of numbers. What you see in the notes out to the right clarifies where I had excesses, where I was very careful with my estimates and came in with some extras. We could talk about some of those and the explanation for them, but generally, I think, because of your experience, most of that's pretty self-sufficient, uh, I mean, self-explanatory. Self if you come to general fund revenues, the first highlighted tab below, or the first highlighted line, you see a variance there of 114. That's the, that's what the revenues give back, and then below you see that added to the budget to come up with a fund balance of 446,815 bucks. Mm -hmm. 
if I take you, if I take you back to page uh, one, two, three, we were on. I can tell you that uh, in the area of federal funding, our, our, our consolidated grants, Title I, Title II, our IDEA uh, uh, grant, we saw across the board $545,000 come in from federal levels to benefit the students of Hampton in our schools, and we're appreciative of that. I mentioned to you a moment ago that Food Service finished uh, in the positive. They had uh, total, total revenues, total sales of 452000 against expenditures of 433 uh, leaving them that net retained 18005 And we carry a single trust fund with our trustees of trust funds here in Hampton, and that is a trust fund that was set up for uh, unanticipated special education expenditures because sometimes those things can pop up and happen and be, uh, be uh, significant in the terms of the budget. That carried a balance at June 30th of just over $219,000. I mean, that's the Madam Chair, that's the guts of the that's the guts of the report from last year. Uh, you want to want us to keep going and come back to that if there are questions later? Mm -hmm. Great. So, just to give you an idea about where we're headed, um, you'll, we, you know, we'll be giving you obviously much more detail as we get closer to budget season and uh, present to you. Uh, but the, the board has developed um, six goals. I want to be very clear about these goals. These goals are never uh, um, in place. They are always changing. They're very flexible. And the board continues to work on them, quite honestly. They, they have ideas about things that they want, and they want to associate um, a way to measure them. So we're working on developing metrics to measure those goals and objectives that the board is, de is, uh, is desiring for the school district. But um, these are pretty standard. Um, uh, these, are, as, as our uh, friend Jerry says, they're like taking a breath every day. So the first one, most important, is curriculum um, uh, instruction and assessment. And we will continue to, to monitor curriculum. Uh, this year we're finishing up with science, and next year we uh, will be addressing social studies curriculum, which has not been done for a very long time. Goal number two, uh, uh, Nate alluded to it a little bit, but we want to find highly qualified teachers. We want to be able to have well-trained, well-skilled, well-positioned teachers to be in our classrooms. We think we do that now, but we want to continue that. And with that comes in a very important piece, and that's professional development. And that's training. Just as companies and as new ideas come out in companies and they need to train their employees, we need to do the same thing. You know, the days of a teacher getting her degree and him or her getting her, their degree and then just becoming a teacher and that's the way it is for the rest of their career, it doesn't happen anymore. Our teachers are very engaged in that. So that's um, human capitals. Um, communication is critical. We, I think you know that. I think the newsletter in front of you is a good example. Um, we put together a newsletter in the fall and in the winter and in the spring. And that newsletter, just to keep the community updated, Channel 13 has been a huge help for us. Um, and we get a lot of good feedback about it. There's a ton of programming on there. Changes all the time. We get to use it as a way to communicate to our, um, to our families uh, to, and to the Hampton community in, in general. Um, we also have, as you know, a new electronic sign. Uh, we use uh, another system called Blackboard Connect, which is an electronic system, which we send messages home with the kids um, uh, via the um, Internet. And so we're trying to cut down on paper a little bit. But communication is critical. Governance is an area for the school board. There are issues that they want to, uh, to tackle. They, they've looked at school calendars. They've looked at um, start times, uh, all of those kind of critical issues, along with their policies. You know, they have a significant uh, number of policies that they must review um, every year. And as a matter of fact, right now they're going through uh, their school board policies under governance and how they work and how they work together. So they're constantly monitoring that. Uh, the, the next one is finance and facilities, which um, obviously uh, Nate alluded to around how we budget, how we work out, how we use our money. I think the, mo the thing that we're really proud of is, is one, we, we finally cracked the nut with food service. Nathan alluded to that. We've been in that since we came. Nathan and I, five years ago, were concerned about the fact that we were always in the red. And that meant that the taxpayers were funding food, and that, that wasn't the way it was meant to be. So we did some things and worked with the board, worked with our food service department. But Nathan's done some other things. He's re, he renegotiated contracts. He's always looking to um, talk to the folks that um, do business with us because 
you know what, sometimes they think that school districts have deep pockets. Well, they don't. And so we make them accountable, and we Nathan's really good with his team uh, to, to try to get the best possible contract. We, and that includes buses and electricity and, and, and uh, all of the utilities, along with benefits, by the way. That includes things like workers' comp, um, uh, a property and liability, all of those things that um, long-term disability that we have. Um, all of those things are important, and Nathan um, works to do that. And the last one, and I'm going to talk a little bit about this after Nathan talks about budget 215-16, um, but um, is the Hampton Academy project. And I did put in front of you um, uh, a couple of things. One, I'm, I'm, I'm hope that you'll be able to ha find some time next uh, Thursday, uh, September 24th, to attend a community forum on the topic of the Hampton Academy renovation project. And uh, I also put uh, next to you a, a two-page survey. Uh, the facilities committee, which is kind of directing this um, effort, is interested in hearing and receiving input from the community. So if you take a few minutes, fill out the survey, uh, drop it at our office, or um, give it to Jerry. Um, and he'll get it to uh, our facilities committee. Uh, we'd appreciate that. So before we launch into where we're headed, remind you that the, the budget that we just are reporting on 15, 14, 15, uh, was 19 million nine hundred and sixty one thousand, including all of the appropriations in that year. This year, 15, 16, we started July 1st. We've just opened the schools. The operating budget itself, the general fund is just over 20 million. Uh, there was approval for the long term maintenance article that we've done. Uh, I can tell you. It's, there are notes in the, in, the, um, in the newsletter, but I can tell you that over the summer we finished the renovations of the bathrooms in the fourth grade wing at Marston, making those accessible uh, and appropriate. We, you may have seen it, anybody driving by, we reconstructed and repaved the parking lot and bus loop at Marston. Uh, those are the biggest projects going on this summer. Moving forward, uh, we we also approved the the owner's project manager arch and architect fee uh, warrant article for eighty six thousand dollars, and child benefit services again for Sacred Heart. So the total appropriations in fifteen sixteen just over twenty and a half million dollars. So given that that's where we are, we'll be back to you in December presenting a proposed budget for sixteen seventeen, <laughs> and here are some of the things that are driving. First. Remember, we work really hard each year to do a, a, a zero-based budget. We, stop, uh, we, we, we start over with the principles and we talk about what are our enrollments, what are our needs, what are you really going to do this year, uh, as opposed to taking last year, as, uh, as I know is frustrating for some, taking last year and just adding to it or just rounding up by a percentage. So we, we put them through a lot of due diligence uh, and, uh, and then the board puts us through that as well. And, um, and so we'll, we'll continue to pursue that, trying to drive our budgeting process against our goals, driving those home. There are some budget drivers coming, but I, can, I want to remind you, because it, it didn't make it into the slide, we're negotiating now with, uh, with the Teachers Association. So there'll be a separate article uh, for teachers' uh, increases, any salary increases or changes there. That means that that, which is 75, 80 percent of the budget, that that portion of the budget ought to be relatively flat, because it'll be actualized at current people, and there won't be any great increases related to contracted staff. That'll all be in the separate article. I just mentioned a few minutes ago that energy we we really locked in well, so there should be some savings that we can generate in the area of energy. We wait to see what our health insurance premiums will do in driving those costs, and I can also tell you that we're already starting to see that there may be some special ed related costs. Uh, uh, population changes that are affecting us this year that we'll have to accommodate moving forward. But we'll continue to monitor student enrollment. That's a large predictor of budget need. Uh, we'll see the NESDEC enrollment projections come to us again in November this year, and we'll have those at budget time. And we'll pay attention closely, as we always do, to the entitlements <coughs> because there are some, you know, there's an annual conversation about how those may change and go away and, and have impact on our, on our schools. You know, the, the only follow-up I would like to make in terms of the remarks that Nathan just made is that the school board has not been afraid to look at those enrollments and take the necessary steps to ensure that we are um, managed well. And, and that happened late this year. If you recall, we, we eliminated two positions 
um, very late in the year, um, we were able to repurpose. You know, there was a retirement. Somebody slipped into that position, and somebody else changed into another position. So we didn't have to lay off anybody, right? But we were able to reduce our numbers of, of staff because of enrollment. So the board has never been afraid to do that um, as long as it was reasonable and as long as the class sizes were managed well, and that did happen. So that's a good example of of the, how we monitor that enrollment, making sure that we meet, meet uh, the, the needs of the kids. The, the last slide is the one that we really put a lot of effort in, and I, uh, again, you, I gave you some information in front of you tonight. Uh, again, an invitation to join us on September 24th at 7 o'clock in the Eastman Gym at Hampton Academy. Also, to please fill out the survey. Your input is very valued in this process. Uh, we want to be transparent. We want to hear from our community. This will be the first of several forums, by the way. We'll, this won't be the last one. This will be the first one to get some input, and then we're going to try to take Take all that input together. We've been interviewed um, town leaders. We, we have some that we'll see tomorrow, the fire chief, the police chief, uh, the planning uh, director, uh, the town manager, his office. I'm not sure Fred will be here, but I think uh, Jamie Sullivan will be. Uh, um, we are meeting with senior citizens tomorrow. We have several people that uh, agreed to come and talk to us about what they see their needs are, the library, the recreation department. So we are working very hard to make sure that we hear all the voices in the community. Um, we have, the board has a, a, a pro, a Hamp, we call it Hampton Academy Project Advisory Committee. It's about 20 people on this committee. And they meet, we've been meeting pretty regularly, and they're making decisions about which direction we go. And they've been very involved in those decisions thus far. Um, we also hired a known as project rep. We're using Trident uh, Project Advisors out of Salem. They are just the best. You know, Nathan and I um, felt that we would be at a disadvantage given that we have full-time jobs to do every day, right? And to take on a project like this, we really needed some assistance. Um, based on recommendations that I received from my colleagues, other superintendents who have worked with this, uh, with this organization, they have made substantial savings. And by the way, we've already seen them save us money. And in, in, in that eighty thousand dollars, so you know it's amazing uh, that they they have the understanding of the project and are not taking the project over. They are there to be help us to advise us, but ultimately the decisions uh, down the road will be made by the school board with recommendations from the facilities committee. Um, we also have now just brought on a, a, an architect and engineer who has gone through, just completed an audit of the building, existing conditions. Uh, when the weather changes, we'll be doing a forensic audit. We want to know what's in the walls, what's in the roof, what's in the floors. Uh, so they're working with us uh, in, in also working on these surveys with us. So that, that's been a great help. I mentioned the forum. and. Lastly, why now? Everybody says, why now? You know, is there ever a good time to look at a renovation project? I, I don't know. I've been in this business a while, and I guess there's never been an ideal time to do it. But I, I, I contend there are three strong reasons that make this the perfect time to do it. And that's because bond rates are exceptionally low. I was kind of chuckling with Nathan. My mortgage on my first house was eight and three quarter percent. Right? And I don't want to tell you the year. <laughs> but, um, but now it's around under 4% to get a mortgage, and our bonds would be under, well under 4%. So just imagine that. That's a huge savings in terms of what the cost of the taxpayer. You know, we don't see any major, major projects in town right now. There's no fire stations, police stations, major water sewer, uh, water works, you know. So we feel that, because um, we want to be careful of that. In the CIP, we've been in the CIP, so we know that there are other projects um, in, in the horizon. But right now, it seems like uh, uh, the window is open for us. Um, and last but not least, but which is very important, the bonds at Marston and Center are about to be paid off. Um, Center will be paid off in August of 2016, and, and the bond at uh, Marston will be 2018. That's equivalent to about a half a million dollars, um, which is equivalent to somewhere around $8 million worth of construction money. So do, do you see that... that Without affecting the tax rate, um, we this may be the ideal time to do this. So that's why the board went and authorized to move forward with it. Mm -hmm. 
they'll get some recommendations and they will make some decisions <clears throat> probably late December, 1st of January to decide what they want to do and whether they will put it on the <coughs> warrant as an article. That's their decision based on all the work that, and all the information we can give them. So that's it. <coughs> You know how to get in touch with us? <laughs> oh, we're not you know you where out. we are? We're not letting you out that fast. <laughs> that's, everything sounds <coughs> very good for a wrap-up for the last school year. Um, please do tell, though, how did you turn that loss in food service into a positive? Uh, I would tell you there were uh, I mean, two, two, primary, two primary efforts, I guess. One was a, a, a refocus at labor. And uh, and a, a thinning of labor, so there were positions in two of the three kitchens. We maintain three kitchens. Uh, one of them is the primary kitchen where preparation is is done. There's more warming. Uh, they'll hate me for saying that because they do a lot more than warm food. But uh, but the other two are satellite, uh, and one of them already is about as thin as it could be. But we made reductions at the other two, and that helped a bunch. Uh, we also, I guess it's more specifically I could say, we had site management going on. We had, we had site leaders at the satellites, and we reduced that, which was a significant salary issue or significant wage issue, and the director has taken on that site supervision responsibility. So we saw labor savings, uh, and then we worked really hard with menuing and with purchasing to try to make adjustments there. Uh, you know, there's also a small element of it, I say small, of trying to generate more revenues by selling more meals. Uh, and we, we did a better job of that this year than we had in the, in the two prior periods. Thank you for that. We added some, uh, some mouths that we feed, and Head Start was looking for a place to, um, to work, and there was a room in center, and so the <laughs> youngsters are, the Head Start three- and four-year-olds are at center school, and with that comes food. They need breakfast and lunch, all paid by the feds, and so because we added more meals every day, that we had a greater revenue without increasing our workload. So that brought in some additional revenue. Um, so that was a wonderful program. Uh, that has been the um, apple around a lot of people's eyes in terms of state, uh, knowing that we have um, embraced a program that was really struggling to find a, a home. So that, that, that worked and it helped. Everybody came out a winner when you think about it. You know, we, we got some revenue and, uh, and they got a place to house the three and four year old program. Thank you. We have a couple of new members on our team this year, and for that reason, I'm just going to uh, give a little commercial that tonight is the wrap-up of the previous school year. Um, it's not quite budget rounds. It's a little bit of a heads-up of previews to come. Uh, Superintendent Murphy and Mr. Lunny will be back in, in December and give us a full presentation for the year going forward. So this is traditional in September to just look back at where you were. Your, your calendar year is not the same as ours. And going forward and everything you do with the school department, remember they have to think almost a year and a half out, which makes it more difficult for them because the calendars do, do not coincide with the municipal calendar. Um, I only have, um, I actually, ha I only have one question tonight. And kind of just a heads up, you probably don't have the answer as yet. And it was in watching the Board of Selectmen's meeting last night on the new channel that you have and how there may be an uptick perhaps in your requests or maybe not. Well, there, wasn't a, there was not an uptick. Um, there was, it's the same amount of money. Um, but I think the issue, and I'm, I haven't been briefed fully on it yet, um, but my understanding is is that because they only, um, by warrant article, only have a certain amount of money of which they have to use to run Channel 22 and Channel 13, and of course in the transition, uh, and they've upgraded a lot of equipment, there's a concern that they won't have enough money mm -hmm. to fund their station and the request that I made uh, on behalf of SAU 90, which was for $35,000. Um, but that's the same amount I did last year. Um, so I, I just need to get with them. Um, we need to talk and figure out what we're going to do about that. Um, uh, I, I'm, I'm confident that we will find a solution. 
uh, that will at the current well sort of a little wrap up last night for anybody who didn't see it there was broad discussion the Comcast contract comes up for renewal and with that sometimes the rate that is is allowed for us can be increased if if they so um, choose to negotiate in that direction of course with that will raise everybody's cable rate so it's a balancing act and 25 percent right now goes to uh, the two cable channels and the 75 percent goes in the general fund so it's sort of a give and take across the board to see if something else will be negotiated in the new contract right. if your needs will be met um, there's nothing decided but just thought I'd ask you if yeah, you we were hope looking that for we'll the same. Play. We hope we'll play a little bit, uh, piece in the uh, negotiations uh, in previous school districts that I've worked in, uh, Newmarket. Uh, I sat in the negotiations with the town uh, to, to at least present the needs of a school district. I'm hoping I'll have that opportunity to do that. Thank you. Um, that was the only question I had now looking around the table. Are there questions from the, okay, I see Tim's first, then Glenn, Sonny, all right, Scott, all right, I'll start over here on this side, Tim. Um, I wanted to follow up on the comments made about the cable TV fund. Um, back in the 90s when it was created, uh, it was created by a Warren article, for 100% of the so-called franchise fee that is charged to each cable subscriber. 100% of that goes into the cable TV fund. The withdrawals from that are subsequently authorized each year by a separate warrant article. When a certain citizen pointed out to them that they were not diverting 100% of the money to promote public access channels, which is the requirement, they're only doing about 30%, the selectmen decided to uh, correct that problem by putting out another warrant article, which caused them to uh, put only 25% of the revenue into the cable TV fund, which I argued at the time why that was so wrong is because it is, in effect, a sales tax. Taking 75% of a user fee, which is what it's supposed to be, a user fee, taking 75% of that and putting it into a general fund is the very definition of a sales tax. However, they managed to sell it to the voters, so there we are presently. Now they're saying, or well, we're hearing words that, well, we don't have enough money in the fund. Well, the reason you don't have enough money in the fund is because you're subsidizing, by using it as a sales tax, you're subsidizing the general fund. So that's, that's my comment on, on background on that point. I did have a couple of questions. Um, I noticed uh, on a couple of these line items that perhaps some of these are related to snow. Is that uh, you know the enormous uh, weather we had this past winter? The, there was a. I, I guess what I would say we did some because we did some work on roofs. Uh, we we were pretty careful in measuring, uh, according to the state fire marshal's uh, suggestions, to check the weight that was on the roofs. Mm -hmm. We cleared drains, we cleared paths so that as the melt started, the water had a place to go instead of freezing and uh, melting, refreezing, et cetera. So we had some expense there. And then we had, uh, we had a fair amount of, uh, of grounds upkeep that's not normal this spring coming out of the thaw. Because uh, of the winter. Because of the winter that we had. So there was some. Okay. And uh, am I understanding correctly that you pay your own plowing and so forth? We we do our own smalls, but the lots the the lots themselves yeah the lots are covered by the town, so the graders come in the town crew comes in and does a great job of clearing the lots, sidewalks the perimeter around the building, uh, the sanding and salting of flat tops with the the playground area and such we handle that with hand uh, hand you know pushed uh, snow blowers and the pickup truck that that the district owns. So essentially the town is, is plowing out all your parking lots. The big stuff, yes. And, and the roadways. Yes. Yeah. And you're handling the ancillary. That's correct. Ancillary okay. is better than smalls. I didn't quite know it's a It's a comment that's been made to me. We've got the smalls covered. Okay, great. Nice oh, job. God, I'm concerned Thank with the lodge. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and one final question. You yes. mentioned that you're in uh, union contracts. And uh, I'm curious, um, because of Obamacare, 
and always, you know, that little thing in the background that plays some influence. Uh, there's this thing called the Cadillac tax, which could, takes an effect, no doubt, in the contract period that you're negotiating. And I'm curious, is does your health insurance program qualify as a Cadillac plan? So we negotiated with our paraprofessionals last year, and we addressed that or had that. That was a part of our conversation, our dialogue, because we ultimately approved and the voters approved a four-year contract that mm -hmm. would go out. Um, f health insurance is a very small footprint in that right. in that agreement. In this one, it's a larger issue. Mm -hmm. We have only had our, our opening our opening uh, opportunity to meet, but I, I'm confident that in the course of the conversation, there will be dialogue about the impacts that are coming. Uh, there are metrics that have been compiled to help present which of the plans, not all of them, but some of them, would, in the foreseeable cycles, reach the threshold and become um, qualified uh, qualified plans to suffer an excise tax under the Cadillac tax. So I, I don't know at this point anything about the duration that we might contract for, but certainly if we contract for a duration that slaps up against Cadillac tax in January of 18, then, then we, we, we'll be sure to have that conversation and that will be part of what, what comes back in is an agreed the, settlement. Is the, is the present health care plan uh, qualified as a Cadillac plan? Right now, none of them hit the threshold. None of them. But, okay. but to be fair, at least one of them, with any reasonable, with any reasonable uh, premium increase over the years from 15, 16 to 18, <coughs> would hit the threshold. So there are there are, there are adjustments that need to be made, at least to that one. And that's simply because of the increasing cost of health insurance. Uh, so one could perceive that everyone is eventually going to be a, a Cadillac plan. Well, I, I, I mean, we, based we, on that, it's just a question of time. Yeah, I mean, just a question of time. I mean, and I, the last last news I have is that the is that there is an index that will be considered against that threshold over time, but the index will be an, an economic based, like a CPI based, not a cost based, it's not a cost, and yeah. it's not going to rise nearly fast enough to, to, to keep pace with what the health insurance traditionally has. So. Right. Enough consideration. I'm getting nauseous every time I think about Obamacare. Well, <laughs> thank but, you. Uh, thank you very much for your direct answers and your leadership. I very much appreciate that. I do have other questions, but we can reserve those for the IT committee, uh, the Sorry. IT subcommittee. Okay. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Glenn. Oh, just a quick one. Will um, the forum be televised? Yes. Yes. Great. So if you thank can't you. make it, uh, John is going to do that awesome. for us. Yes. And uh, a great job. Your whole office does a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Okay. Just a couple of quick questions. When I saw the reduction of food costs, I assumed that you went on and started brown bagging. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing is, it occurs to me, when you start rehabbing an older building, you're running with a lot of problems because lead, you know, the laws have changed. And where the kids are involved, you'll have a lot of extra costs that, you, that you'll run into. We are undertaking a forensic audit, uh, and I with that, yeah. uh, they use ultra ultra rays, and they <laughs> go into the walls and ceilings. And we haven't done that yet because you need certain temperature conditions in order for that to happen, so that they can actually see when they go into walls and in the ceilings. But we, you know, I agree with you. I we're very cautious on this one because it is a very old building. You know, the first section of that building was built in 1939, and we're using it every day. Uh, so you're absolutely right, Sonny, and we're very cognizant of that. Yeah, because once they yeah. start tearing the walls down, right. they find all but kinds of But you need to know, we have bathroom fixtures that are 1959. Now, I, I, you, you just have to know that we need, we, we, we've got to address some of this. I think those in here, then. It, <laughs> but I've been through that school. Yes, <laughs> yes, many of you have been through that school. Yes. Scott, you had a question? Yes. I, um, on, on, on page uh, page seven, please, your report. I've, I'm just not used to oh, the format. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and I see the operating budget under appropriations. Yes. And, and, and that that variance of the 18, 3, 18 million 394 versus the 18061. Correct. That comes from the previous page. It's 332,000. Yes. But the, the variances of the federal grants, the food service, and other warrant articles, they're not in that 440? They're not. Six, they're not. Why is that? They don't. So if you look at federal grants, uh, 
state law makes state law directs that we shall grossly appropriate, and that means that we have to gross up our budget. Like you might talk about grossing up your salary or something in a business, we have to gross up the budget for the total amount that we anticipate spending, regardless of the source of funds. So, in our budget that you're looking at in the 1415, there was a $600,000 appropriation for federal grants. That was a that was technically an approval to spend up to 600,000, although we declared that we would find the revenues somewhere other than federal other than local taxes. So dollar for dollar up to 600,000 we could bring in federal grants and spend them with that authority. We really only spent 584 584,516. There was an equivalent revenue that offset that because federal grants are a wash in and out. The same is essentially supposed to be true for food service. Food service is supposed to fund itself. So in our case, we had a budget approved of a, a, a placeholder, a gross appropriation of 625000 because the program was at one point up over 500000 annually, mm -hmm. and there was potential for growth, we thought. Now we're down to a four hundred and fifty dollars or $430,000 target. That food service figure of 433 was offset by... Four hundred and what did I say? Four hundred and fifty-four thousand in revenues. Okay. But food service is a self-funding venture, and so it gets to keep its fund balance. It's left over, so that doesn't roll down. So the reason I highlighted in that pink color, general fund revenues versus general fund expenditures, is because I share those. I don't know. I share those because I use this document for myself as much as for anything else, <laughs> and I want to keep track of those. But I share that information. So that, so that I can show you where it comes from, but it doesn't add up into the general fund okay. that goes back to offset taxes. That last sentence was so, com I apologize. But yeah, I got you. Th thank federal, you. federal and food are placeholders and they don't add to the general fund, okay. fund balance. They have to be placeholders for us. For instance, this summer, we had an opportunity to pick up another $10,000 grant. Well, I didn't know that when we developed this revenue projections, and yet that $10,000 enabled me to um, do some a additional professional development with the teachers. So we go after any money we have. Right now we have a grant uh, at the emergency management for some of this uh, safety issues around our buildings, around safety. And, um, and so we just submitted a grant. And I don't know if we'll get it, but w you know we're, we have to do that. And unfortunately, when we do these and when Nathan puts them together and we try to figure out what we're going to get, we often have other opportunities, and so we kind of spread it out a little bit. You'll see more money than we actually spent or used. Okay. Before I switch to this side, was, did I see, David, did you have a question? Are, we, are we good? Flat David, did you? I'm, I'm also. Okay. I am. Bob? I have kind of an overview question about the land in West Hampton. As you approach the project, Will you be getting an assessment of the market value of that land and whether or not, if that land is not chosen for development, whether it can be disposed of to reduce the cost of the academy? And if it can't, what would be the use of it going forward? Well, you know, we did uh, some initial inquiry around that land. We did survey. We did, and we had engineers in. We did archaeological dig. We did all of that work to to, and we walked it with engineers. Um, the board made a decision, Bob, that they wanted to renovate Hampton Academy. They made that decision a good year and a half, two years ago, that they felt that given the the uh, charrettes that were done in town and the, the desire to have the schools as part of the downtown, you know, sense of the downtown for Hampton, that they wanted to stay there. So we've left that land the way it is um, with the focus on renovation project. Um, however, the question about whether we can sell it or not, we've looked at the, um, we looked at the deeds um, it was deeded from the True family to uh, the school district uh, for the purpose of a school. And so we're going to have to dig down a little bit deeper as to whether we have uh, the uh, right to sell it and for, you know, uh, money. And we will do that. Um, obviously, we're looking for every opportunity for revenues that we can to help. Um, and we have some ideas about what we might do. Um, but I don't have a clear answer whether we can do that with that piece of property. Thank you. I have quite a good question. Steve? 
Is it too early to ask about this year's student enrollment? Did it meet your expectations? Did it? Is it less than? Is it more than? That's another great question. Our 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 um, enrollment has declined a little bit. We we saw another dip in it, and we saw it. It's really a very interesting thing that's happening. We saw it at the primary school down in kindergarten. We didn't see it at Marston and Hampton Academy. So what 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 we're we're kind of trying to figure out is is that th it's a little bit more expensive to live in Hampton. The prices of the homes are a little bit more expensive. And so we're seeing more mature families move into Hampton. So they're moving to Marston, the age of the children, our Marston age and Hampton Academy and high school, but not the little ones. So we took a hit at the, at the primary school. Why, that's why we reduced two classes. Is it worth saying, I think one of the other dynamics in that is that we had not seen uh, a predictive right. downturn in birth rates. In fact, the birth rates mm -hmm. seem to be recovering through the late aughts, 08, 7, 8, 9, that would be leading us, 10, leading us to the incoming kindergarten. So the comments the superintendent's offering are an attempt to try to explain why, if birth rates seem to be on the rise, are we seeing lower enrollment at the entry level at the primary grades? Because we didn't think we thought they were going to be strong. We thought that they were actually going to show some increase over these years. Although, I mean, the projections aren't that there are sig significant increases. Period. we relatively flat, but this didn't seem to jive with the birth rates that we had seen reported. So, it maybe is more of an economic reality in terms of housing or who's moving in, who's moving out, and who's replacing them. Good news is birth rates are up, and our preschools, who we work with pretty closely. Um, have, are telling us all the private preschools in town. We meet with them regularly because we have a really working relationship with them, and they are telling us that their seats are full, and they weren't in the last couple of years. Yeah. So, heard, it's kind of a. I heard recently, within the last couple of weeks, that um, Hampton now is the has the position, the top position, number one position in the state of New Hampshire, as having the. Um, um, is the term median median age group? We have the oldest population, in Hampton. I guess um, Laconia had it before. Now Hampton holds that title as having a population. The populace is is an older, the oldest. And it kind of goes along with the idea that our our families are more mature. Mm -hmm. So I that mean that I mean a little bit older, little you know, bit. where they can f afford to live in a community that. You know, you, I don't have to tell you. You all know that. You live here. You, you, your Let's home get prices. Secret. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great community. It's, it has wonderful, wonderful um, services and support. And you know, it's it's just a, a great place to be. We, we're pretty proud of our schools. Um, but you know, that's it's all depends on the pocketbook. Thank you very much. <clears throat> sure. Anybody else on the side? Anyone? I want to thank you very oh, much. Thanks. So, thanks. Oh, thanks. Oh, sorry. Thank you. I can't see him sit there. So he always, he's, I see him. We he's, finish with Brian. He's always got questions for me. Um, and, <laughs> and actually, I want to <laughs> say, you good. guys have been fantastic. And one thing I want to say is, if because I tend to not put things ahead of time, when I've asked a question and you didn't have the answer, you got it to me faster than I could have believed you could have. <laughs> And I want to thank you for it. Well, thank you. Because um, I never expect an answer that immediate moment if you don't have it. So thank you for that. Um, are we looking at any more LGC money coming? Or yeah. Are we done with that? Yeah. We just uh, I talked to the board the other day. We just took in another check for two hundred and fifty-two thousand, and I don't remember the details, but two fifty-two and something uh, came in. Uh, that'll be paid out. I got. Uh, I put in the request for the data so I can get the breakdown of who, who spent what and how much of it is district contribution, how much of it employee contribution, and how the retirees play in so that we can... Uh, we've made a commitment inside the district and with our retirees that the cycle continues to look like uh, early September checks coming out of uh, Health Trust uh, because now it's an, it's, an on it's an annual thing, it's a regular thing mm -hmm. because they can only keep, unless the statute changes at some point, they can only keep 5% of claims as a reserve and anything else has to go back and that's very simply put but but as a result there is the potential that every year there will be something coming back they seem to be steady with returning those dollars in uh, early September 
it's a rough time to jump, do all analysis, and cut all those checks. So what we've said is we'll do it before Thanksgiving every year, and we'll aim for the, the, the end of October, the 1st of November, to get those checks out. As a result, you'll see whatever the district's share of those dollars. Another business administrator might do something different, but the, so the board and the superintendent have been supportive of it so far. I don't like to just let things fall to the fund balance if I can avoid it. I like instead to talk about it and show it so that you see it, you know where it came from, you know why. So the revenue is in my hand now. We've put it in the bank. I'll pay out to the staff and to the retirees in November, let's say. I won't let that fall as, a, as an unanticipated revenue to the fund balance June 30th, but I will put it on the MS24, which is the revenue estimate, as a known revenue to offset the same taxes that the fund balance will offset. That might be gibberish to some folks, but for those of you that have been doing this a long time, setting tax rates, maybe you, you get that. So rather than just saying, hey, that's in the fund balance, I actually put it on the revenue estimate for the same period and say, this is a revenue I know I'm going to get. So it still offsets your taxes, but we get to essentially label it. So I didn't get it in time to make it a part of this cycle, but it'll be a next cycle. Do they give you any warning or say, you know, this is what you can expect anytime? Yeah, there was a report that came out at some point telling us there's never a, there's never a promise about when the check will come right. or, or whether the number will change upon final... Uh, or guarantee. Or guarantee, right. But there was... They gave us a guesstimate. I was able to... I mean, I made okay. a comment to that about uh, to staff uh, in the spring that I knew that we had additional dollars coming uh, and, uh, and mentioned it. I don't remember if I mentioned it to the board in a report, but... It was larger than I thought. I expected it to be on a par with the, with uh, the biggest one we'd yeah. gotten, and it is because 254, I think, is the biggest one I'd gotten before, and this one was 252. So, they bodes well for all the retirees and the and the and the actives in the region and the district. Do get something right up there. Yep. Um, I know we spent for the. Um, <laughs> I'll still call my iPad. Um, we well, increasing technology. Those. Are we going to see another increase this year? Or how are those working so far? So right now what's happening is that the, 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 the placeholder, not the placeholder, but the appropriation in the budget for technology that we've been working on was essentially $200,000. And we've come mm -hmm. to this, this board and, and the school board as well a couple of times over the last couple of years and talked about how that's being used. I think this year you'll see that we're shifting away from capital and using that more for uh, professional development to support the teachers in using you get to one-to-one, -to -one. our Chromebooks have all been purchased on a three-year lease cycle. So we need one more buy. Uh, it's a, it'll be a small buy for one grade compared to the others. Uh, the board was supportive in helping us pick up three grades worth instead of two grades this year. So now I've only got the one left. Uh, and so it threw me off cycle a little bit in terms of when's my rotation and how is this going to play out. I'm a, a little bit OCD, so I like things. <laughs> to be. Uh, they haven't, uh, I apologize, that was an editorial, but, uh, but it's true. Uh, so I've, I've got to work my way back into a, into a cycle that makes sense. But a lot of the 200,000 or 60 some has shifted now into lease payments. The remainder uh, will, is being spent on upgrading servers as need be. Uh, and we still have, we still are maintaining the labs, so you still have desktops, you know, in, in a lab at each of the three schools, and, the, uh, and there's still an element there. I don't know that those recycle again, because with a, with a, a device in hand, mm -hmm. the lab is less important, but there are some things that you don't necessarily do in a Chromebook that, at, at least at the academy, they'll need some higher end desktops, some of the CAD work, some of the design work that they're doing, and, and so we'll see some investment there. Uh, but that's one of the conversations that we're going to talk about in the budget cycle is what are we spending now on professional development and what ongoing capital costs do we have? I, one of the biggest things I'm looking at right now, and Greg Paris, the technology director, and I talked about it again today, is replacing these coax, community-based Comcast cable connections with a dedicated line, like a fiber solution. Because now I've got... For instance, at Marston School, I got 400 kids, mm -hmm. and I got them all on the computer at the same time, potentially. Right. It doesn't really happen quite like that, but it's a whole lot more than five or six or 10 or 20 here. It's a couple of hundred of them, and the bandwidth is getting tight. At all three buildings, we're going to see that. We're certainly seeing it at the Academy in Marston now. And you can only do so much against, uh, against the Comcast cable account that everybody in the neighborhood is using. So right. if you happen to live down the street and you start to stream some crazy video, 
I'm feeling it and vice versa in the schools, right? So that's one of the things that I think we may see an investment in as we move forward. That so, was my next question. Yeah. It was how are they working as far as, you know, everybody on at the same time and it, you, know, you Brian, have to separate by classes. Brian, if I might. Let Brian finish with this question. The, um, the I yeah, so they're working. It's working really well. For the well. most part, they're fine. Yeah, we put up we put up new Arrowhive uh, wireless connections, wireless access points. Right. Been great. It's an enterprise solution that really works well. Now we just need enough bandwidth so that they can actually yeah. all use the internet. <laughs> I'm really psyched that the program is working well. Thank you. Thank you. And sorry, Tim, I interrupted you, and I know you know more about this stuff than most of us. Well, my point is no longer relevant, Madam Chair. Okay. Could I ask one more question? Mm-hmm. The MS-24 yes. that's due on uh, September 1st, are you f is it finalized as far as the school goes? Oh, geez, he's dodging that bullet. Just, uh, I'm just asking. It's pretty close. It hasn't been finalized. One of the that's questions that finally, I, I apologize that I, I have to just say this out loud so that people at the town can, because they're waiting and they'll know. I went looking for data that I haven't gotten. I finally went into the superintendent the other day and said, have you gotten this and this? And she looked up at me as though I had been asleep. <laughs> And I know that I haven't been, but I just hadn't connected the dots on this. She said, we don't have a state budget yet. So the state <laughs> can't send you that, and they can't guarantee you that because they don't know if they're going to be able right. to fund that or not. I, I heard the rumor that there might have been a budget they did. Yeah. A budget uh, compromise today, so maybe I'll see a flood of information. But <laughs> I went back to work on it after that and said, "Oh, I'm supposed to just estimate that with my best, which is fine. I can do that." That's but crazy. I was still waiting for stuff that wasn't coming. So I know you might want to catch the late news to see who the winners and losers were before have to you do all that night. work. Yeah. I know the commissioner, the DRA commissioner, sent out a letter that you probably got that explained because the budget hadn't been approved how they were going to go about doing that right. state portion of right. these school taxes and um and and i'm under the same gun with yeah. the ms34 at the village district <laughs> but it's basically i've got a couple more weeks yeah. Yeah, at the end of the month that's it because they're going to set that you rate want to beat you know, me, is that what you're looking for you're looking at that spreadsheet you want to get in before i do i think that i think that not only you guys but i think the town is probably in the same boat yeah. and the oh, thing is if you think about it it's everybody because DRA doesn't have a bunch of employees, and boy, do they get hit hard. It all happens at once because everybody, you know, wants their tax rates set and all of that. And I have so. to figure out. I got to get online and figure out how to do the 24. Because that's the other thing. But sorry. it's not really too hard. It's not too bad. No, the 20. I did the 22, and they call me. <laughs> we can commiserate while we do it. <laughs> the state, the Department of Revenue, really has done a great job. I just have to do a shout out. When you cut your staff in half, your labor force in half, you've got to find efficiencies. And they, I, I remember one of the auditors saying, do you know how much time I spend just running a 10-key tape to make sure somebody added it right? So they've instead now made this. They've automated it, and you key the numbers into online, uh, an online solution, which does all the math for you so that they don't have to double-check it. And that, it, 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 its time was certainly coming, and I applaud them for doing it. I uh, certainly feeling feeling just how old I am when I, every time I turn that on, I think, another tool I got to figure out how to use, but but it's coming. I yeah. might want to spend a weekend, though, and go through the math again just to make sure that's right. right. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, the, the electronic uh, forms that they're using now do help they a do. lot. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, thank you very thank much. You. Adam, sure. Just as an FYI, I, I was told today that the chairs of the Senate and the House approved an agreement with the governor and we're voting on it tomorrow so by tomorrow night you should have some have answers. Uh, mm -hmm. good thank you thank you it's nice to have an insider yeah, i know yes. i know it is i know it is okay. are there any other questions okay thank See you then. thank you it's a pleasure thank, thank you, you very much thank you very much mm -hmm. have a great fall Always we take a little break. Five minutes or ten? Yeah, I'll take a ten minute break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll go I, through I, the second half. Okay. Yeah. There's a lot of those questions. Oh, I mean, speak of the devil. Perfect time for a break. By yeah. the way, Brian. We're not, we're not off camera yet. That's right. All right, welcome back, everybody. And um, I want to start out 
after break by just discussing with all of you, while we were on break, uh, Superintendent um, Murphy did invite us to tour with her um, the um, Hampton Academy. So if any of you are interested in touring the Academy, please send me an email and I will arrange a convenient date, perhaps. Um, would you like would you like to take that on, Steve? I'd, I wouldn't mind doing that at all. As a matter of fact, um, you said that you were going to send me the email list so I can send a, a blast email out to everybody and, um, and try to organize that. Okay. okay Fair I, enough. I will so do I'll, that. I'll send you an email blast tomorrow and everybody's <clears throat> email addresses and then... Um, Again, funnel everything to me. I'll send it to Stephen, and we will try to set up a date with mm -hmm. Superintendent Murphy. Okay, absolutely. All right. Thank you. And, okay, now moving on to correspondence. That's always a good place to be. I had requested some figures um, relative to Conservation Commission. And um, you now have them. We're going to just go over the correspondence that's gone in, gone out, hasn't gone in, hasn't gone out, and not review that tonight. I'm going to put these things on the October 6th meeting. I think all I want to impress is what's still hanging out there. All right. I have received at this point no correspondence from the town clerk regarding the election, regarding our terms. I ha did send a letter this week up to the uh, State Attorney General's office uh, for a determination on that. All right. So obviously I don't have an answer on that one for you, but we, I've gone to the next step. Good job. All right. I also sent a request to the town manager for the figures relative to the snow and ice abatement during the winter, all the figures on expenses, actual expenses, as we pointed out at the last meeting. Uh, he is on vacation. I put a, I didn't put a deadline, I put a request that it be responded to by next Friday, realizing he won't even be back until next Monday from vacation. So I think that that gives um, at least 10 days in there, working days, to be able to get those figures put together. And Yes, sir? Would the, that would include any monies we got from the government, right? For the emergency. No, that request had been um, given to Selectman Bean, who, is, who has now joined us um, since the break. And um, we had asked at the last meeting, Selectman Bean, if you had, if the select board had heard anything about the reimbursement from the federal government for the two days of the ICE emergency. Yeah, you've got to, you've, you've got to uh, include me on these emails for uh, uh, information requests. I'm not getting any. That was done in person at our last let me, meeting. Let me just continue without interrupting, please, Madam Chair. Uh, you know, we've established that, and if, if I get the emails, and you're talking that you, you've got emails under the town manager, you've got emails under the town clerk, as a selectman, if I get a copy of that, I think I can help expedite and get information. Well, if I could just finish. Very so, simply, Mr. If, can, if I can finish, me. or do you want to just talk? I, I think I'll choose to talk at this point. That way we don't have to go on about the protocol. Very simply, has there been, and this is a yes or no, has there been any word or discussion on the Board of Selectmen concerning the funds coming back from the government? You watch the meetings, and if you have information requests for me, uh, for this committee, and I have none, um, I'll respond to them. Thank you. We've talked about that. You've, you. Moving on. Thank you. I'll take that as a no. Madam Chair, if I may ask a question. Yes, you may. Selectman Bean just <coughs> referred to him being the conduit of communication to the town clerk. Um, does that confuse you as much as it does me? Given the town clerk does not report to the Board of Selectmen, the town clerk is a separately elected officer. It confuses me considerably. I think I'm just going to choose to answer this in general terms. 
we have offered every bit of cooperation. Thank you for joining us for five Mr. minutes. Mr. Bean leaving? <laughs> Look, I'm going to take this opportunity. I was going to do it a little bit later, but I'm going to take it right now. We've offered every avenue for cooperation. You've sat here. I've, across the board, asked many questions. They're in your minutes from the last meeting. I have, across the board, no response <coughs> to Selectman B. The figures that you got today from Conservation Commission were directed through the, to Christy Pulliam, who wrote back, who said it needed to go this way. It went that way. It took three and a half weeks to get back to us. And today, it was given to me by hand from Christy Pulliam. So make your own determinations. As a committee, by the statutes, look, we know what we can do. We know what our responsibilities, and we're bound to do them. You all took an oath to do them, and that's what we're going to hold ourselves to. If we get cooperation, fine. If we don't get cooperation, that's their call. We can put a budget together nonetheless, all right? It serves the town better to cooperate. I would much rather have discussed probably the 10 or 12 bullet points that are on your, in your minutes from the last meeting when we discussed how collectively we could put together a million dollar Warren article or a million dollar revolving fund to address the roads. As Representative Woods said, the work that was done clearly this year made a huge difference. We need to do that for our community. It's not for us to call policy, it is, but it is for us to look at dollars and it is to look at how they're being spent. From what I've gleaned from the, the, from the budget over the years, that could be done in a specific way that would take from areas in the budget that we already have, but just earmark it very specifically. A cooperative conversation between us and the other powers in this town that have the process of putting this budget together would certainly benefit at all. <coughs> if we want to sit here and talk about protocol and, you know, Selectman Bean did uh, challenge me, I guess, to watch the meetings. I have, and quite honestly, I've heard way too much about protocol and I've heard very little about substance. So I hope this board dedicates itself to the substance, to the job we have to do, and after tonight puts all of this aside. I will ask, as we have and from the very first organizational meeting that we had after the election, as I have every year since I've been chairman, I've asked that all questions go through me. I think we've got a nice format now, to, as you have, to put them in writing. You've respected that. I thank you for that. We're very orderly in how we're doing that. For anybody listening, for anybody even concerned, I want you to know that we have in no way done anything as has been portrayed where we've gone in and um, taken employees and demanded that they be here, nor will we ever do that. What we have done in every year since I've been here for 15 years is to wait till budget rounds, send a schedule to the town manager, and then, and then he then schedules, and the finance officer then schedules the department heads to come in. When the department heads sometimes come in, they may have had someone on their staff who worked on a project and knew more details than the department head did so they would bring them for backup. The budget committee has not gone beyond really the, the department heads and even at that it has not been us who has established that they come in. It has been the format that has existed long before I got on the board and has never really needed to be changed or tweaked in any way, shape or form. So I want to make that very clear. None of us are running rogue. None of us. And I say that down to a person <clears throat> in here. We're conducting ourselves with order. I do not feel that this committee should be on the defensive and should be listening to it being torn apart. I, I've listened to the Board of Selectmen's meetings, and they have issues amongst themselves. All right? And tonight, I really want to really park it. 
excuse that expression, but I want to park that debate. And I just want to go forward from here and not talk about it anymore. We'll make our request, and they'll either be considered or they won't. All right. And we'll get the information, I promise you. <clears throat> and, Madam Chair, I think it should be noted for the public that are watching that there are 14 people here tonight, full attendance, okay? And... 14. 14. We have a full board here. Well, 15 okay. is the full board. Yeah. Well, the, 15, <coughs> the 15th person just left a few minutes ago, but we have 14 people that are here that are dedicated to doing this job, and I think that should be noted, okay? Because I think that's... Uh, the other thing that should be noted since it's live TV is the fact that the representative from the Board of Solicitor got up and walked out because you asked him a question. I can't. That's the second time yeah, he's done it. Anyone watching will come to their own decisions. Yeah, I, but just, I, mean, I think amongst ourselves, so. I have spent really at this point a gross amount of time listening to the debate back and forth, reading the articles, um, being I, interviewed, and I, I think parking it is a wise decision, and we should move okay. on. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you very much. And with that, well, I think Sonny making a good point because not only did Selectman Bean just walk out, but he walked out after having been arrived two minutes earlier. So he arrives at the meeting an hour late. I think the more just in time for break, and then two minutes after the break's over, she, he walks out after being asked a question. I think he make Sonny makes an excellent point, Selectman Bean is with some regularity been, one might argue, abusing Mary Louise, calling her unprofessional, et cetera. But his no, behavior I, on this board has been most unprofessional, and I will say no more on the matter. I really, I really choose not to have it be any personalities brought into this. What I think was missed tonight, we threw out some information at the last meeting that would have necessitated us working cooperatively. And now, with the exit of Mr. Bean, Selectman Bean, who has pointed out that they'd like a certain protocol, we have no avenue to do that. There is no avenue. What, what there is is a ruse of information um, and connectivity. So I will put my request in writing. I will send it off to the town manager and the full board because my intention was for communication that at the next meeting that we do jointly meet here on October 6th and discuss what could be done um, per the conversation we had at our last meeting to put together possibly a warrant article that may just strip some money out of the budget into that warrant article. I don't know how we'll make it work. But the thing is, to make the money that we're spending work better for us, and in that, choose our funding as we go forward for the budget. Tim? Madam Chair, may I suggest that when we send these requests out, that uh, the requests be uh, copied to all the budget committee members, which would include Select and Bean. I think it's a, a courteous thing to do, in, in spite of other factors in play. But also, I think uh, no, I the, send that to the attorney general's office. Yeah. Well, the, I was going to go there. I I, um, I, th I think that demand a new representative from the. State. Well, no, 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 no. We don't. We it is not We're our not place to do that. So let me no, please let me again. finish. Yeah. Or and, sue them. and I understand well, the alternate on the the alternate representative from the board of selectmen to the budget committee is selectman Bridal. And he should be copied on all these correspondence as well. So uh, I hope you would uh, copy everybody on the committee, including the alternate. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Moving on to the calendar itself. Does everybody, I have Mike? I uh, correspondence to them. Thank you for getting something off on the uh, Warren article. How about the three-year contract issue? Not yet. Are we going to pursue that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Just didn't want to forget about that. So. When, when are we going to discuss the five points that I've made here? The points that you've made, Jerry? Yeah. I was going to put that on. We just handed that out tonight. Or is that the old one? Uh, yeah, I was going to just summer, just quickly go through them mm -hmm. so that I could explain them to people. Well, how about if we read them at home and then we can Having discuss them the time? from last year's exercise, these were things that I thought we needed. I didn't get one. You know what? Um, yeah, I picked them. I picked them. 
I'd like I'd like to be able. I think Mr. LeBranch uh, makes a point that I agree with. Uh, <laughs> give us a chance to look at it, Jerry. Fine. I haven't had a chance right. to read them yet. So. Fine. Yeah. yeah. I am. The intent tonight, Jerry, was to gather up some of the questions, and actually kind of spur some of you who didn't bring any in start thinking about some god bless you and as we go forward to this october 6th meeting that's going to be i'm going to send some of these out try to get answers for them try to get some of this correspondence back and actually have an october 6th meeting that's just us it may not be a long meeting but it may wrap up some of these loose ends because after that we're going to be going into budget Everybody should be paying attention now because the um, Board of Selectmen will start their budget rounds now. So you should be paying attention to those rounds on TV, at least in rerun, um, or following it on the computer and stream it. Uh, because that was like, they'll be asking some of the questions you might have been asking and they'll be resolved. So you don't want to come back and then ask the same questions. Mm -hmm. We don't want this thing to, really, we don't want it to last forever. Um, so if you could do that, that would be perfect. You will be, you will be forwarding those email, emailed questions to everyone, right? Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, but I've gotten some of them tonight in hand. Jerry's I got late today. Uh, he sent it to me yesterday in fairness, but I didn't get them till today. Uh, and what I'll do is I will put those all together for you and send them all off to you in, in an email. All right, to digest. You may have questions on top of that. Again, send them back to me. I won't do a two-way with you, so just send them back and we will discuss them October 6th. If they need to go to um, finance for answers for the town manager, I'll send them out accordingly. Can you make a suggestion? Somebody said something about, besides sending it to our, our selectman's rep, also of uh, this, the backup, the Mr. Uh, Bridal, right? Yeah. I suggest that we, when you send anything to him, you send it to the town manager and all the selectmen and just have it, whoever you want it to be, go to, have that as the two, but copy all of them. That way they can't give us the this. That's guy. actually a good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're, they're just pointing good. fingers right yeah. now. Right no. now they go to the selectman's rep, they go to the town manager, they go to the secretary, but I don't have a problem with that much. Right, it's not a big deal. And then you can't get this. Yeah, they're, all, they're all doing whatever one of these that was things. Yeah. To yeah. whoever is intended to I mean, would, CC the world. I the mean, only thing I would point out is that it would be nice if you, we keep generating these, these emails and these letters out, it, it would be nice to get a timely response. No debate. The, right. the, uh, I, mean, I think the more of the paper present. trail we have, the better we off would be if there's ever a, a significant issue come up, you know, in the, in the conversation. Not mm -hmm. saying there will, because I don't like to cause trouble, but you never know. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bean is present tonight. He should be considered absent. And any time he comes no, and walks I, out. I think there, I, I, he was here yeah. for five he, minutes. He came here to meet the superintendent and, and, uh, and talk a, a little bit about SAU 90. Well, and then he sat, he didn't like the tone, and he yeah. left. Jerry, according to statute, the recs don't have to come to meetings, they don't so choose. So it's an academic. Uh, okay. I mean, really, they don't have to, according to statute. It's, it's quite a perception. If doesn't want to come, or you don't want to come, yeah. All right. so be it. It doesn't yeah. make it right. Let's move on from there. And and my only concern, I say, Eileen, is that these people are off preparing budgets, and they're going to go in for review, and the selectmen's review, the points that I'm making here, if they don't do better than we did last year, it's going to be same old, same old when they come in here. That's my real concern. And, you know, unless they prepare well and review well and really work at a good review, they're going to get, they're, it's going to be another default year unless they've prepared well and reviewed yeah. well. So that's I, my major concern. I understand in, in speaking to the town manager, the assistant town manager, they've gotten the message and are planning, unlike last year, <clears throat> to have a budget that's pretty trim. And they understand, as we did too, um, that the voters would rather vote for some things and more an article. So I expect that we will see a trimmer budget and a larger, maybe not a larger number, but a number of Warren articles Large. to consider. And 
in the spirit of, of SB2, I think that's what the process was meant to do. But you have a choice. I mean, we highlighted the last meeting that people complained about too many warrant articles. Well, with the warrant articles, you also have a choice mm -hmm. on whether you want to vote for them or whether you don't. So that's up to you. But at least this is trying to keep the budget from the beginning a little closer to the breast than last year. Now that's what's been conveyed to me in conversation and I appreciated that and I have my hopes that that's how we will proceed. We'll find out in a hurry. Exactly. Earth. So that door is wide open and that's why I say, you know, I have selectmen on this board, I have a state representative on this board, I have people who served on this board, I have people who served in the economic community and jobs that they've had. We have a lot of experience on this board, okay, and we can give this budget a good direction. I have no doubt about that whatsoever, okay? Amen. We asked for fuel costs from the very first meeting on Jerry, this we gave them fuel costs. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we gave them what? We did. We gave them the... We gave it. We, mm -hmm. we asked for them, we didn't get them, and right. we gave them to them in the end. So right. that's what I'm saying. We offered cooperation. We're still willing to cooperate. But we do have questions that will need answers. And if we don't get them, then we'll find figures on our own. And, and what agenda you, item are we presently discussing? I have no Let's idea. Let's go on to 11. All right. Uh, review of minutes. I've got August 18th. Who wrote that? It's so good that we have a secretary. Um, actually, July 18th is... Which minutes do you want to review? It, August 18th should be July 21st. Okay. <laughs> that you just got August tonight. July it was warmer there. So please cross that out so we don't get... Which one are you going to do first? June or July? Did we do June? <coughs> no, you all wanted more time for August. June. Okay. Are we ready to do them now? We're doing July, I believe. Well, let's go backwards to June because you've had plenty of time on June. Yeah, let's get it out of the way. All right, June 16th. Accept those. Um, I have an amendment, Madam Chair. Do I have a motion? I have an amendment. You have an amendment? Yes. On page two, right at the top. We have to move the minutes. Thank you, Glenn. I'll second. Thank you, Brian. We're on page two at the top. All absences must be excused through the chair. I believe that should read all excused absences must be approved through the chair. <laughs> yes. That's correct. Yeah. Fred Beach White. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I, I have a comment here where my name is mentioned under budget review. I don't understand that statement. <laughs> the reason I discussed the default budget had built-in increases, and therefore the default budget was in control. I can't imagine me ever saying that. Okay. Because I felt that the default budget had line items in it that shouldn't have been default line items. Scratch it, I agree with that. Remark. So I, I don't know. Maybe what they got on tape, that's got to be... What page is that here? Two. Two. Line two. If there exists a line item in the Third paragraph on the page. Mm. Oh, I see. Mm. It's just <coughs> quite scratch that. The context of how that was. Okay. Just scratch it. So how do you think it should be phrased? Yeah, I think that's well, I would just, you know. <coughs> I think that's what you said, but I don't think that's how you meant it. Uh, it doesn't, written like that, it's kind of out of context. Well, you're not yeah. quoting him anyway, but I think his intent was yeah. that the default budget had built in abuses, and therefore the default yes. budget was in control. Is that accurate? It did well, have some built-in abuses, and do you want me to go back? To be okay, two choices here. Do you want me to go back and review it and put in exactly what you said? Do you want me to just scratch it? Just change the word increases to abuses. Well, I don't know that that's what was said. Well, that's what he intended, and I you're not quoting it. Well, yeah, I'll look at the tape. I'll look at it first. <coughs> it's not being quoted. This is an, this is a summary of the essence right. of what he was but saying. Right, the essence was that... Okay, I felt right. That moving right along now. Moving, moving on. along on that one. So we cannot approve this budget, then? Well, there's another, there's another, I mean, my name uh, is mentioned well, are again. are there any minutes. other corrections? God, my name is mentioned again on the budget review, third up from the bottom. Got it. Jerry's and only explained if there exists a line item and an increase can be backed up with backup data that's in the budget, then it may be justified being in the budget the way they've submitted it. Mm. Uh, it's, it's some clarification there. We backed up with data. Yeah. Backed up with data. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It may be quite, quite justifiable to be in the budget. Right. 
Uh, whereas one. last year there were significant increases and the backup data was so weak okay. it wouldn't present it to anybody. Okay. So right. insert the word B between May yeah. and justified, right? Can I make a suggestion? Uh, when the minutes are typed, there should be marked draft until, because five years from now, somebody will look, see this and think that's the minutes. They should be, they should be okay. marked draft. When Thank they you. Page three. Any changes? I'm glad I fired myself. <laughs> Go ahead. No changes on page three? Page four. Come on, you can find something. <laughs> Don't you stand. Slack is. Okay. Page number on this. Page number. Find some changes. Do you need a motion to uh, approve them? I, I don't mind. This is a legal record, so I don't mind. What do we need to do now? Um, the motion or? Actually, there's, there's a motion to approve. Um, okay. Well, we have an outstanding item with uh, yeah. Jerry that's not going to get resolved in this meeting, apparently. All right, then we'll put them off, and they'll still remain yeah, draft mm -hmm. until October 6th. All right. Now, July 21st. Do you feel you had enough time to go through? I did. Okay. Mm -hmm. I also, in case you... The July meeting you're talking about, right? Yep. In case you noticed, I put a different format on that oh. that I think makes it easy to run through. A little bit more of an outline. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very nice job. Oh, boy. I think that, uh, well, we're going to move this. Yeah. So move. I'll move it. Get a second. I'll second. I got an amendment. All right. Page see. two, yeah. the uh, fourth bullet on the page. Yeah. Um, it's actually quoting me, which, of course, demands that it be precise. What are you talking about? What suggestions do you have? All right, page two, number four. What is it? What is it, Tim? Oh, it does. What is it? Well, I, I do think, I, I do believe that I speak grammatically correct. Yeah. So, I mean, it should say additional income does not equate to. Yeah. The word two is missing Tim, Tim. appropriations. Tim. Oh, is that yeah. all your... The fourth bullet? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't make any sense without that word two in yeah, there. Yeah, it doesn't. Okay. Add okay, that. got it. And, by the way, uh, at the end of that, if a tax base is, is broadened, taxes should go down, comma, that's the other side of the coin. Of course, I was referring to Mr. LeBranch's comments, which are not in the minutes, so it's kind of out of context generally anyway. So, so strike both lines? I, I don't care. I just want to correct it somehow. All right. Any other corrections on that page? No, I have no other corrections in the entire month of July. Thank you. By anybody else? Thank you. So do we... Have a motion to motion accept. Motion to accept. Uh, I'll I can live with it if the two is getting in there. With the it's in there. With the Already with it's in there. The road is in Second. There. Second by Glenn. All right. For our new secretary, that motion was by Jerry, seconded by Glenn to approve the minutes. As corrected. July, right. As corrected yeah. with the addition of the word two to July 21st, 2015. By all the way, way, that's two all T O. Those, all those in favor. Opposed? Come on, Jim, join us. I'm no. abstaining. Not tonight. You're abstaining. She opposed? You here. Right. I wasn't here either. All right. So we have, what do we have? 14. Whoa. We have 12 yes. Well, you were excused. And anyway. two abstentions. Michael Pluff and Jim O'Loughlin have <laughs> abstained because they weren't here at the last meeting. Excused that. Thank you. Okay. On that. All right. Um, That's it. The precinct report. That's you. I know the bullet is written that the impact of the budget should be discussed. So I would like to make the point for the audience at home that the precinct budget is entirely paid for by the owners and residents of the precinct. And while it impacts them, it does not have a tax impact on the town budget. Having said that, we are both within the government and the recreation and promotion of parts of the budget well within the budget. Our expenses are pretty much over for the season, but we'll have additional revenue 
coming in throughout the fall, particularly from the parking lots. This year, the casino had trouble with summer engagements because of competition with summer venues in areas like Boston. Yeah. But it has many more scheduled concerts in the fall to which we benefit greatly. There will also be quite a few major road races down around the beach, some of which fill every parking space on the beach, so we'll have additional revenue from that, and that will all be to the plus. So in summary, it's been a good year, and things are going well, it's, and obviously the parking lot had some speed bumps getting going, but it's pretty much all there now and should be smoother in the next season in terms of revenue stream from that part of the process. Thank you, Bob. That's all good news. Tim, is it about budget? Yeah, it's about this report, yeah. The uh, Hampton Beach Village District's activities do have an impact on the town budget, particularly DPW, fire, and police. There's no question that there's an impact there. Now, I'll leave it at that, unless we want to dispute that point. No, I don't want to dispute. I don't. And further, want to get Madam into Chair, that. as a side, I'm really getting tired of seeing this word Hampton Beach Precinct. There's no such thing. It's called the Hampton gonna... Beach Village District. I'd appreciate being recorded Tim, accordingly. I'm going to move on in Thank this you. conversation. You're welcome, Madam Chairman. I have, do have a question, if you don't mind. I don't mind. How did the new parking lot do? We talked about the parking the lot. One you have an old one and, and a new clues? one. Yeah. Well. That one really didn't get going to fairly mm. late in the season. Yeah. So any numbers now are small, but we hope to have additional revenue in the fall. And we've had interest in some people wanting to lease spaces. Is it and asphalted? No. Mm -mm. No, it's a gravelly surface now. Uh, we've pretty much got all the lighting in place. The f part of the fence is in place, and, and arrangements have been made to put a toilet in the shed that will be coming. So it's it's pretty much there. But I don't think this would be the year to uh, really use that revenue point significantly because it won't be there. Are you planning on asphalting it? Mm -mm. At this time, no. Uh, if, if there were drainage issues or some other issues, that's a possibility in the future, but not at this time. So it's rains pretty good, that's what you're saying. Yeah, right? well, we haven't had enough rain to really ultimately test it during this period of time, but we're hopeful and we have nothing to indicate it wouldn't be. Okay. Thank you. It looks good down there, though. It does. It does. It looks real good. Thank you. It'll be busy this weekend with the race. Okay. All right, moving on. Jerry? I'm going to eliminate your report tonight because I think you had good representation there. Yeah, one one comment, um, Superintendent reminded me to remind you guys when you do this survey. Yes. There's going to be questions. You know, you're not going to have any idea of what the answer is or what your feelings are because we don't have the, the the question that has a question, and then we may not have the substance or information to really answer it. Just say that. Okay. When you go to mm -hmm. do your question, that you have no idea. Because you don't have enough facts or substance or what the heck they're talking about, uh, indicate no information to, to comment or something like that. Okay. Some of the questions are pretty straightforward. You know, you can, you know, like, you know, what, what grade do you give the cost effectiveness of the project? Is it most important? Now, how would you like to collect these? Uh, is it when anybody when anybody's done? Uh, is it something that can be done in five minutes, ten minutes after the meeting, and we give them to you collectively? I, I will be more than happy to pick no. them up. And no, you can yeah. this has to be. You have to look at this. Mm. There's quite a few. Okay, is our, our next meeting October sixth? Is that a good night to give them back to you? Or did you I'd like to have them sooner. Sooner. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to drop them off. Jerry up, yes, and he'll come down and pick them up. You can drop it off in my mailbox. Uh, PDF them to you. I was going to say. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, all right. If we all left them in the mailbox, would that be the easiest? My house is my in front of my house. I all right. Mailboxes, so you put let's there. put it this way. Throw it to the window. Mail, whatever. Or the SAU 90 office is open mostly. Yeah, SAU 90 office is another place you can drop it off. All right. So you'd like to have them back prior to that meeting, yeah, actually? Yeah, I, I think we need to be propped here. All right. So today is the 15th. What do we say by the, the meetings, the 27th? Well, I, I would say by the end of the month. Or by one, the 25th, one or two maybe? By the 25th, next 10 days? Yeah. Okay. Appreciate you guys getting them back to either Jerry or the SAU. Right. Put them in the mail. They'll get right. there the next day. 
And of course, you heard about the budget preparation. We're under underway, just starting yeah. on that. And of course, the Hampton Academy evaluation. I did. We did meet with the architect. They brought the architect in. They also brought the owner's project management team in. And I will say, they were good people. They were. It really looked to me like they were on spot. And when the architect starts talking about classroom space and how much should be allotted or not allotted, he, he was really spot on in terms of his comments at the last uh, he, mm -hmm. yeah, he was there. So that, that gave me a, a feeling that we had some, some good people working on this, both on the uh, project management end of it and also the architect. He's very experienced, his firm is very experienced in this area, so he wants to come in correctly. Mm -hmm. I, I really emphasized to the project management team that, you know, whatever dollar amount co we come up with, it, 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 it better be lean, you know, and it better be really cost effective. No, no frills. What do we need? Why? How much? And I really stressed that to the project management team. The architect, I didn't have to stress it because he, he, mentioned enough things to tell me he was tuned in. Okay. So we got some good people working on it. It sounds like it's in good hands it and we we'll look forward hand. to how this yeah. project That's shakes itself out. Um, moving on to the selectman's report. Um, we don't have here. a selectman, <laughs> so we don't have a report. You want me to give it? Oh, no. All business. <laughs> all business. Um, yeah, I, I think we've let out most of the old business tonight that's hanging around under correspondence. Well, uh, what are we going to do, though? I mean, I'd like to get yeah. into the wastewater treatment plant. Mike and I would like to get in and see some of these vehicles Mike's so that there. we have a firm feeling of what they might oh, be coming. Okay. Well, Jerry, between now and October 6th, um, probably sooner rather than later so I can have an answer for you by October 6th. If those of you... And it, it doesn't even have to be a subcommittee. If you have a question, if there is an appointment that you would like me to make, send that to me now, and I'll forward it to them so that we can start to set these things in motion. You know, as I said, we, when we started this, this isn't so we have 29 visits. They're specific to look at things. I know it's difficult, all right, when we don't have the budget yet in front of us. You'll usually have more questions on the back side, but it is also an opportunity to see things as they're working. So if you have a, re a specific I'll request... I'll make a request and copy Mike Pluff. Okay. Copy. Uh, the thing is, is that if they come in and we're not, and we haven't made our visit, we haven't really toured the, the wastewater plant, I need to see things that are still in place, blah, 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 how the new president's working. Mm -hmm. and, and both Mike and I would like to take a look at these, these equipment needs, the status of the existing equipment. Because we hear words like antique, or it's had its day. Well, I did listen to the meeting last night, and it sounds as though um, a list has been compiled mm -hmm. and um, coded. Color. One minute. Mm. And coded by um, DPW, and we have in excess of $5 million worth of equipment. So it sounds like we have a step in the right direction. So I heard that last night. Like I said, town manager's not here this week. So I, I expect any requests that I send out there may not be addressed till next week. But that's one of the ones on my list right now to get that list of the rolling stock and send that to you. Mm -hmm. But if you're both telling me you'd like to set up an appointment. Yes, I, I, I that, definitely okay. want to set up. Mike, how you feel? Uh, I've got a I mean, can you, you, yeah, can you copy all of us? Because if we all <clears throat> want to go. Yeah. What, uh, yeah, if we, if, if, yeah, if we want, we hear the date and we can make it, we'd like to go. Wait, 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 wait. I've got three people talking right, at the same time. Right, boy, Remember, right. we're, being, we're being recorded by a secretary who's not here. Not here. So what were you saying, Brian? I was just simply saying that if she lets us all know if we're available, I mean, some of us would like to go too. To the DPW? To the DPW. All right. Oh. Tim? Madam Chair. Uh, I believe we have a DPW subcommittee. Is that true? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like and I. So the DPW subcommittee should be doing its work uh, in in, uh, in in the fashion appropriate. And if that means going to, to request a a tour, then that's what it means. Yeah. So you know, go through your subcommittee and make that request uh, according to the. And we'll make a dialing yeah, efficiency. Yeah. We don't need we don't need to spend time in this committee. Is all I'm saying. No, that's no. what the subcommittee's for. And I mean. You know, we're right now, we're getting stonewalled. 
Okay. Well, so we'll make that request. Yeah. Uh, let me make a suggestion. Mary Louise, uh, one of the selectmen, when she was on the board last year, she wanted, she set up a tour. I was the only one that showed up. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll give her a call. To, you know, I'll tell her. I, I'm sure she'd be delighted to lead the tour through the I don't think we should put any one selectman on the spot right now. Let's do it through right. the town manager. Let's just put no, the request out there. Yeah, I agree. And do it through the subcommittees. It's more than a tour. This it's is what I'm this is what I'm talking about earlier. I don't want to spend two hours on who's going through what. A request <laughs> is going to be made, all right? So the the Subcommittee is present in this room tonight. <clears throat> They're saying they want to set up a meeting. Yes. Okay. I'm going to request a meeting. Right. All right. Uh, at their time and their convenience, and we'll accommodate it. And All that's right. what I'm talking about tonight. I'm not going to spend this year spending half of every meeting on who's going to what. Exactly. And quite honestly, I talked to Assistant Manager Sullivan, and he says he doesn't see it working that great either. So I think we probably finally have a commonality that see what this log jam is not working. Doesn't see what works. Twenty right. emails to all email to ask one question. Her to oh. request okay. what you want, and then she'll take care of it. That's the way it's supposed to That's work. That's it. With the so oh, moving yeah. on on that, do I have a request by any other committee? Tim, just a minute. By any other committee, a request for any other actions at this point in time, or any other meetings that you'd want to have set up. I just will let you know that we are scheduled, well, I have been told we've been scheduled, we will be having a CIP meeting before we meet next. Okay. That's the only thing. And you'll report that back to us. All right. I do have full CIP report that is about mm. 200 pages. And when I figure out how to break it down, um, I will scan it. I can't do it in its entirety. It's too big. I can't email it to you. I can't copy it because I don't want to kill a forest. Um, but I will get the pieces to you um, in some semblance of order on that. It, it, it is good information to have as we go forward. It came in helpful um, a couple of years in a row, especially in regards to Warren articles, because it's far more detailed than we're able to digest in a meeting. I will get that out to you, but it will come piecemeal. I promise you that. As well, well, when I get the book, I'd be more than willing to share it with anyone that wants to borrow it. Yeah, it's nice it. to reach out and touch your computer. Oh, right, but I'm Story just going to say, if anyone wants it. Thank pages, you, Brian. You're right, about only about 10 pages in that whole 200-pound mm. brick. Yeah. yeah. Or I would think it would be available online at the town's website because they do have every board's minutes and agendas, and I think they would post it there. I think it took up too much memory. Wow. There, there was a reason they... There's a lot a lot of pages to it. <clears throat> it really... No, ours is done, and the tax impact is stipulated by year. Hmm. Okay. So, new business? Anything tonight? I don't know whether it's old or new business. I don't know either sometimes. Go ahead. But I don't know. You said you would have come to me. Are you coming to me? I have... I have... Uh, a concern that you know we we have set up subcommittees for the purposes of saving time at this committee as well as other people's time and we don't seem to be you know utilizing as fully as we ought to um, so I just wanted to make that general statement do we not have a CIP uh, subcommittee I, I don't remember for sure but I thought we did what we have is a CIP representative and that's in okay. Brian so the need for a subcommittee in CIP so I'll look forward to his report and rely right. upon his wisdom to inform me on the topic at hand I don't need to get all kinds of paperwork I think the overall answer to your question is that we actually have not utilized the subcommittees as much as people think we have we've only used them when we've needed them because there was a wealth of information that had to be garnered tonight i'll give you for instance where subcommittees may have been used in the past um, or a useful point for them we have the superintendent coming in saying you know they're looking at basically many millions um, to propose in redoing the academy that's something you can't always digest in one night. Your front 
impulse might be to vote one way with a little bit more information or a lot more information. You may be better informed and vote another way. That's a way that a subcommittee can keep tabs on that. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to be in somebody's presence 25 times. It means that you follow every article on it. It means you follow it in the budget, in the, in the school committee meetings on TV. That's a very good thing. So you don't have to go there. You can actually benefit by watching it on TV. And then report back or enlighten us, perhaps. But we haven't gotten to that point. We haven't started gathering anything yet. At this point, we're just trying to accommodate everyone with a stream of requests in an orderly fashion, if I might say. So we have not thrown anything out there to stick against the wall yet. Um, we are doing that right now. Your arm is going to stay in that permanent fixed position. What, Tim? If I may continue, uh, my point was that mm -hmm. the membership of this committee is not looking to their subcommittees as much as they perhaps ought to. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was my point. Okay. All right. And uh, I also wanted to make a statement about the IT subcommittee, if I may. Yes, you may. Uh, the IT committee uh, requested uh, protocol uh, through the chair, via the town manager. A month later, we got the reaction, which you all no doubt saw about on, on TV. Uh, that was two weeks ago. Uh, since that time, uh, we've met twice, and we're meeting for a third time at the conclusion of this meeting in this room. Oh. Okay. And uh, if you want, I'll, 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 I'll get into status if you wish, but I just wanted to get that out there. Um, I don't have a problem with the status as long as it's brief. If you're comfortable with that, or unless I, when we talked about it earlier, you said you wanted to wait until after tonight. So be better. I think October 6th would be good. You can October also include 6th. this meeting you're having tonight and bring us up to speed. <coughs> Bottom line, I believe you're still in the process of formulating your requests. And I just wanted to let you all know that you have an active IT committee. Thank you very that's, much. That's very interested in doing the work. And if you have any issues relative to that, come to us, you know, and, and we'll, we'll see what we can do to, to uh, get your questions clarified. I believe what we, something we talked about in the meeting, too, is that if anybody has any questions, we're in the process of formulating those now, finalizing them. Mm -hmm. So feel free to stop by or stick around after the meeting tonight yep. and talk to us. We're all going to sit around and, and kind of yep. fine-tune those. And our meetings are open to the public. Thank you. Well, I'd like to report that the administrative subcommittee hasn't met. <laughs> And I have absolutely no idea what it does. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe we ought to just uh, slim up the number of committees. Well, it, no. Because we, don't have a, we don't have anything for we, you to do yet. We may not have anything for you to do. There may not be anything. But it might be an area that you might want to jump on top of any information that comes out regarding insurance. A little bit was discussed tonight about LGC payments. Mm-hmm. That, and that has to do with administration, so that you're, you take some of that burden of listening to that aspect off some of us and fine-tune that in anything that you hear with increases or decreases in insurance or maybe um, where the implementation of Obamacare will lead us with the budget. I don't but think should it, Shouldn't we be looking for the, the, the department head of the presenter of that budget to to respond to that question and, and tell us at, at that time? I mean, I... I would think so. I would, yeah, that's what it comes I've never been now. comfortable with how this works with the subcommittees. Maybe the site visit to actually look at, you know, look at the machinery and the equipment and that, maybe that makes sense, you know, but but I, I mean, I think that, that you get the people in front of you and you query them and, and you expect them to have the right answers and if they don't have the right answers, you send them home and they should come back with the right... Well, there's the some questions time. within the information. For instance, when you get the payment from LGC, and it's broken down. As they were discussing tonight, it's not just money that goes back to the town. It, it belongs to a pool that includes retirees and includes employees. So of that, uh, what was it, 252? 252 or something. Yeah. Of that 252, it's kind of like a three-way split between the retirees that paid into it and employees that paid into it personally out of their pockets and then the school department that paid in, all right? Yeah. Now, 
that will leave something to go back and what it goes back into. For us, will it go into reserves at the end of the year? Will it go into the general fund? Will it go back into funding insurance? But is that a question that, that we might get into in, in our subcommittee? And then when it came up, we said, don't worry about it, we've got it covered. <clears throat> or would we explain it again like it was explained to us? Well, it, it might be. I mean, we have, it depends on how many issues. We give each department, and I know that you guys are new to this process, but yeah. we give each department a night, and in that night there's probably that insurance question will probably, uh, on the administration end, will probably be one of six different entities we'll touch that night. It would be good to have somebody sometimes on the committee that's really followed it through so that in that abbreviated space that they get a recommendation from you. People will look to you, well, you've been following this. How do you feel about it? All right, and you may have been following it more closely. Quite honestly, I know nothing about trucks. I've always respected Michael mm -hmm. Pluff's opinion when it comes to heavy equipment, um, and so on and so forth. I have very, you don't want to go with my expertise on computers, and to that regard, I, I sometimes, and many times look to Tim because that's his expertise. That doesn't mean that any one particular person speaks for everybody but certainly can enlighten the rest of us, all right? And keep the time frame down when that time comes because there are many meetings that lead up to that final presentation by that department head. Mm -hmm. And nothing may come of it. There may be nothing new to add. That department head might come in and cover it all. But we're just trying to be thorough in our efforts. And as we started out saying, sometimes we use the subcommittees, sometimes we don't. Um, Tim? Just reminded me of a commercial. <laughs> Sometimes you feel like you're not. Yeah, yeah exactly. You know, I'm enjoying it. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> oh, can we get back with this? Yeah. Where are we? At? Just what? But that includes nuts. But exactly. Yeah. Sometimes you feel like a nut. Sometimes you don't. Yeah, exactly. Uh, just what subcommittees do we have? Oh my God. Can I I'm move to adjourn? Well, that's right. Right. Can I move to adjourn? Yes. Jerry, Jerry, <laughs> Jerry had a, wait a minute. Jerry had a question, and then you can move to adjourn. Yeah, I, I guess I'm really bothered by this protocol business. That's fine. I described in the newspaper, and we also heard it. Mm -hmm. So, like, and I don't even know it's legal. If we took what has been defined, and submitted to some state department, and asked them if, if they're within their uh, controls to, to, to put these down as they've stated them. It, this may be another another rejection. They might say this is not legal. If I may speak to that, I'm sure. I'm not finished. Oh, okay. okay. He's not finished. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, I see this protocol as a result of a couple of things. The default budget that we were very adamant about last year and our scrutinization of the budget and giving and giving them the final budget number at the last meeting. And number two, sending that letter into the state, if you will, challenging their request mm -hmm. for another 300,000 for snow removal, blah, blah, blah. We still don't know what the government's given them, okay? What do you mean? You know, and the uh, in terms them? of refund for the first yeah. storm, if you will, federal government. Well, we don't know. We asked tonight. No, I we know. Don't know. I so, so I think that there's a, it's a spike fence, as I see it. This represents, this, this protocol is a spike fence. Let's make things very difficult for that committee, and a budget committee. And hence, this, this sophisticated protocol about this one speaking to that one, who speaks to this one, who speaks to that one. And then this, uh, <clears throat> you know, the, uh, the snow thing, which, uh, which further angered them. So but I will tell you, though, if that budget is not prepared well, I'm going to be the first to see it. Well, Jerry, you know what? I tried to put this to bed a little while ago. The RSAs tell us what our duties are. We all swore an oath. We'll do what the RSAs tell us. We have no control over any other boards, nor do they control us. That's the bottom line. Well, Mary Louise right? was very clear, though. She felt that way. Well, she voted against it, 
she felt was very clear I'm, I'm not, what they did was not we legal. Parked, we I'm not dovetailing on anybody's we anything. I'm I just thought. saying we, we, we put this to bed. We said we'd move on. What I'd rather hear from all of you is no more discussion about any of that and real questions that you do have. Okay? If a subcommittee doesn't have a question, if there's no questions put towards the subcommittee, the subcommittees don't have to come up with something just to make like they're doing something. That's not necessary. For some other subcommittees, there may be a real need to be a little bit more out there and see what's going on. I don't know. But put your questions, forward them to me. We'll do that. Um, Sonny, one more one last question. Yeah, uh, what I'd like to throw out is I think we should start thinking about a warrant article to, re to maintain the size of the budget committee because the 15 people represent the community a lot more than no, I'll let the voters that decide is, whether they want it. That wanted. is not something that the budget committee will be putting forward, but any private citizen can well, do I that. understand that, but I mean... So I'll I, just leave that I at that. just start thinking in those terms. Well, so. that being said, that we won't be putting one out, I don't think that we need to discuss that. Okay. Well, right. we voted may I make a sure. motion to adjourn, yeah. madam? Yes, you may. Second. I'll second. 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 All go. those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. All those staying for the IT committee? <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker.